internet, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Yes, it's finally that time. We're going to talk about Warcraft. This powerhouse franchise spans three RTSs and the juggernaut MMO world of Warcraft, whose seventh expansion was released in 2018. And while the lore and backstory would take several hours to explain in full, you don't need to know any of it to enjoy today's subject, Warcraft. The beginning. Released in May of 2016, Warcraft The Beginning is, as the title suggests, the beginning, at least at a mortal level, of the legendary tale that this franchise has to tell. The orcish race looks to escape their dying homeworld for the forests of Azeroth, but the warlock Gul'dan has his own agenda, which can only be defeated with the help of the humans of Stormwind. Receiving decidedly negative reviews, is this movie truly terrible? or an overlooked gem that fell victim to the curse of the video game movie. There's only one way to find out. So grab your armour, raise your shields and get ready to venture forth onto the battlefields of Azeroth for... Warcraft. The beginning. Behold the dying desert of a nameless world. And the mighty gate that promises passage to a new one. and the first orc to be born on Azeroth, Goel. Take note of how Gul'dan drained that deer to bring life to the stillborn Goel. Gul'dan's magic is the fell, fueled by life itself. And this movie pretty much revolves around its usage and what using the fell can do to a person, or orc. An outcast of the Kirin Tor investigates a surprise attack on a human garrison. The Kirin Tor, official mages of the Seven Kingdoms Alliance. Apparently, Khadgar wasn't down with their ways and methods. But what Khadgar doesn't know is that his destiny stretches out far in front of him. But that's mostly to do with the games that chronologically follow, so we won't go into that. And reports his findings directly to the king whose instinct is to summon the Guardian, Medivh, who doesn't take lightly to an outcast in his tower. It's a lonely life being the Guardian of Tirisful, much more so when the Fell's been... Well, you'll find that out soon enough. But Khadgar is tolerated, as a small force is sent to investigate further. And it isn't long before they find the attackers. And in the wake of the battle, a prisoner is taken. This is Garona. She's half orc and possibly half human. According to supplementary materials, she might even be the daughter of Medivh, which is completely different to canon, but we won't go into that. And Garona leads Lothar and Khadgar to the site of the Great Gate, where another orc, Duratan, has grave misgivings about the fell-fueled horde. And so, Orc and Human meet to discuss peace. You see, Duratan is no fool, and he's realised what fell magic does to the land. Everywhere the fell touches, the land dies. And Duratan isn't down with that, so he's decided to enlist the help of the humans to destroy Gul'dan, and possibly find a new homeland for the Orcs on Azeroth. Which in canon doesn't actually happen for another 20 years, but hey. But there are three sides in this conflict. <laughs> Medivh summons a lightning barrier to protect the human's escape. But oh dear, Lothar's son is on the wrong side. Oh! Ah, Seeking answers. Khadgar returns to the floating city of Dalaran, where we discover the secret of Alodai. Alodai, portrayed here by Glenn Close, which is somewhat of a surprise considering what Warcraft canon has to say about the first Guardian. Ah. But if we started on that story, we'd be here all night. 
so let's move on quickly. But there's still the little matter of the great gate, and so the king rides to face down the horde. But Khadgar has a different mission, and he and Lothar teleport to Karajan to face down whatever Medivh has become. Now I hinted at this earlier, but Medivh experimented with the Fell when he first took the mantle of Guardian. But the Fell is death and corruption, and Medivh fell prey to possessions, where he gave the secrets of the Great Gate to Gul'dan. And now he is possessed again, and helping to cast the incantation to summon the Fell Horde. Diratan invokes an honourable duel with Gul'dan, but Gul'dan is entirely dishonourable. Which makes little difference, as Gul'dan suffers no insubordination. And so the two forces meet on the field of battle. Now while this epic battle is happening, Khadgar and Lothar battle Medivh's golem, which we saw him creating earlier. And then, that selfsame golem gets dropped on Medivh's demonic form. Yes, he has a demonic form. Don't ask. Khadgar then purifies Medivh, because Khadgar. Which happens a lot in the game too, but we won't go into that. The Guardian's final act is to open a portal to Stormwind. Surrounded by fell orcs, there's only one option left. And while Lothar arrives too late to save his king, he will have his revenge. Oh, slice salami, gruesome. Witness then the funeral of King Lane Rin. And the fate of Goel, son of Duratan and Draka. There are as many stories in the world of Warcraft as there are grains of sand on a beach. This was but one of them. But is it worthy of my house of love? This is the movie that Warcraft fans have been waiting for. And in talking about this movie, we have to mention the MMO that spawned it. Because after so many years, the lore is dense, packed with ideas and backstory, iconic characters and names, and we mess with such things at our peril. And yet, both Marvel and DC have pulled off universe building with much greater lore, and streamlined out what they didn't need, to pull in a fanbase that was receptive to what they were trying to do. And you can argue about the DCU, and we will get to it soon enough, but back to the movie at hand. And there's definitely a story there. And it's not actually difficult to follow. The orcs are taken from a dying world to a healthy one, and look to establish themselves. Meanwhile, the humans don't take kindly to the new arrivals. Add to this fact that the Guardian was infected with the Fell from the start, and may actually have been the catalyst for all this, and you'd seem to have a movie. But a movie relies on its performances, and at least on the human side of things, this is clearly lacking. Straight jacketed as the humans are with having to carry the plot. Not to mention that few if any of the cast have any actual star power, and it pains me that they emote so very little in their scenes, with perhaps the exceptions of a very young Khadgar, compared to WoW that is, and Anduin Lothar, who over emotes by comparison. And to me, Ben Foster never truly looked the part as Medivh, the Guardian. The Orcs on the other hand are a triumph of technology, as they are by their very nature CG. And let's not forget that there are actual people under that digital makeup, People like Toby Kebble, whose Duratan is the closest thing that this movie has to a sympathetic protagonist. Or Rob Kaczynski, who imbues Orgrim Doomhammer with a tragic pathos. The flow is necessarily split between the orcs and humans, and while far too little time is spent on fleshing out the human characters, far too little time is spent on fleshing out any of the characters. But again, the dense plot is because of the dense lore, and that's even without them telling us what the Fell actually is or mentioning any of the races that we don't see on screen. But even with so dense a plot, the movie doesn't feel rushed. But it does rather wash over you though. With so little time spent on character development, you're not really invested in these characters. Except maybe in name recognition. As to the music, Ramin Jawadi's pounding leitmotif slash theme is perfect for the Orcish Horde, but really doesn't befit the humans of Stormwind. 
and where the sprinkling of Jason Hayes' theme for Stormwind, alongside an outing of his overture from the WoW login screen are used, it's more for recognition, rather than to put us in the truth of the moment. But through all of this, I can't hate this movie! It's Warcraft! Sure, it's stiltingly acted in places, and it's the highest of high fantasy with griffins, giant eagles, orcs, and even a murloc if you look hard enough, but it's a story from a fantastic world that looks gorgeous on the screen, and holds so much more promise than could ever fit into a two hour movie. So yeah, this isn't the child's fairy tale that the Princess Bride was, but it isn't the sweeping narrative that the universe could provide at its best. It's a two hour movie, but it does do a damn good job at telling a part of this complex and ongoing tale, and I for one am going to do right by it, and thousands of the other WoW fans out there, and yes, I'm going to put Warcraft The Beginning into my house of love. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? Or if you want to be extra awesome, check out my crowdfund links in the description below. But for now, I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days, great entertainment, and victory! Or death. But mostly victory. So long, folks.